PW Gaming here with another episode to the Back to the Basics series. Now, if you're new to my channel and you're not familiar with my past video series, this is a revamp of an old series known as the Beginner's Guide to War Dragon series. And this isn't so much for beginners. It will be here in the beginning, but as we go further in, it'll be more for intermediate and the more advanced players. So this is going to be walking every player through, starting from lower level players to, you know, all the way up. So with that being said, if you are new, welcome. If you're not and you've been around, you're sticking around, even though you might be a high level, I appreciate your support. Make sure before you leave to give my video a thumbs up so we can get it popularized for those that are looking for these types of videos. And if you have any small level players on your team, don't be afraid to share these links in like your team line chat. So that way they can get these, you know, these pointers to help them in their gaming. Now, in today's video, we're going to be going over prioritizing breeding for lower level players. And this is a big one, guys. A lot of us that have been around for a while didn't realize that we got excited, built up our base, and then found ourselves in a really sticky situation. So in this video, we're going to be going over the five major reasons that you should prioritize breeding over leveling your base. Now, the number one reason, and which to me is literally the number one reason, is because of your builder hut caps. Whenever you reach a certain level on your builder's hut that you can't upgrade it anymore, it's also going to create a cap on your towers. Now, to get the eggs in order to upgrade these becomes harder and harder as you come along. So whenever you're stopped, you're either going to be forced to slow down or you're going to have to build a longer base. Now, here is the builder's cap. We're going to go, I'm sorry, the builder's hut. We'll go ahead and go in here. My alt needs four sapphire eggs before she can go up. Now, of course, your alts are always going to be pretty well ahead because it's like, eh, you don't care as much about them. However, in this situation here shortly, I'm going to be capped on a few of my elemental towers because, you know, my builder's hut is capped, which means I'm either going to have to slow down building or I'm going to have to build out further. Neither one is going to be fun for your experience in this game. So try to keep that in mind as you build. Number two, appropriate opponents. Now, unfortunately, the dragons aren't the only part of the smart matching system here in War Dragons. So your level will be a part of that component. So you need to make sure that you're not ahead of your, you know, you're not behind your base level or you're going to really have a hard time finding an opponent you can beat. Now, there will be times that it's like, okay, no big deal. There's somebody with, you know, less millions defense power as my dragon. But you might find yourself hitting a base that it doesn't matter. It might say 40 million and your dragon is 50 million. But the problem is their tower levels are maxed. Because their dragons are built appropriately, they have maybe larger towers than your dragon can actually take out. It's not always about the length and the amount of things that create that. But sometimes it's about the size of each specific tower that you go to, you know, attack. So please, please, please keep that in mind that if you're going out and you're doing attacks and you're finding yourself going to something a little challenging or a little less challenging and you're struggling to get through that, it's more than likely their tower level and not their total defense. Now, just the opposite, you can go in and they don't show you the buffs as much as, you know, before and you're able to take it with no problems. Or let's say you see something that has a high defense, okay, and it's more than your dragon could take, but you have no problem taking it. It's because their towers have been capped at a lower level. I'm still trying to correct my mistake on this because I grew fast because I thought as a leader it was more important to be a larger level player. So keep that in mind as you're going through this game. Now, the third reason is better team choices. Now, many teams in Sapphire and Diamond Leagues are very careful who they choose for good reasons. Now, this is because you're going to be facing harder bases in things like Wars, PvPs, Atlas, and so forth. So they want to make sure that you're going to be able to hang with the crew. So when you're going through and you're looking for maybe your dream team in Diamond or Sapphire, just because you're level 300 doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to accept you. Some of them are going to have minimum requirements on your breeding tier. So someone in like, let's say Diamond might say, look, if you're not at least in Harbinger, high end about to go into Vanguard, we're not gonna accept you because we have other people knocking on the door in those particular tiers. You know, we don't wanna have to worry about you while you're here. So with that being said, that is a big one. If you've got that dream team that you're wanting to join, that might be something that holds you back. Now you might like it down in Platinum and that's totally fine, but if you keep it up high, then you'll be able to help your fellow teammates. Now, number four, diligent habits will spread. 
What do I mean by that? There are so many key details in this game, guys. There's so many things that you can learn. And by seeing the difference something makes in one area might push you to see that, you know, all the little details in another area of the game, whether it be strategy, atlas takeover, castle building, or anything, particularly like building and so forth. So this is the one area, once you start to see the difference that's making for you in comparison to the others around you, not only will it encourage you to try to learn the other aspects of the game, but it's also gonna have other people's wanna follow suit to what you're doing, because you're going to, they're gonna see your success, which means you're gonna be leading that in your team and it's gonna be pushing for better players and better experiences for your team, which in the end means a better team in general. And what does a better team mean? That's right, that you're going to win. So with that being said, guys, keep that in mind. Whenever you learn and you go and you're like, okay, look, I'm gonna learn and understand what it means to breed smart. You know, to use base breeding guides, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say base breeding, breeding guides, breeding plans, and then of course, you know, the smart way to gain my tokens and this, this and that. If you learn that and you start seeing that aspect, you're gonna go, hmm, Maybe if I was smart about the way I did my attacks in a PvP, then I can get better points in the PvP. And maybe if the entire team gets together and they do it as a strategy, then maybe we could take first place. You know, these are things that is going to encourage those in your team to see this. And it's going to spread. It's going to spread over to you know, things like your wars, you know, running, wanting and craving the idea of winning a war by doing it by waves or whatever. You know, a lot of these players out there that are in the higher leagues that are doing all these things by strategy are doing this because they have really taken the time to understand the game and learn how if they use key little details in their gaming, that they end up having a better experience as a player and as a team. So again, keeping it diligent on one thing is only going to spread over to another, which brings me to my last point. Number five, a better team experience. Now having to lean on the other players all the time in your team because let's say your dragons are way behind is going to really take its toll. It can even create things like animosity amongst your team. So you could find yourself next on that list to be booted. Even if you're making great scores, if it's because you're leaning on everyone else around you and all of their resources, they could see you as a less than valuable player. So it's better to have players that are able to play, you know, more independently so that they can be able to enjoy their own game. If they're constantly backing one or two players on the team because they can't make it anywhere in a PvP or they can't even defeat an Atlas base or gather resources for themselves or get XP or whatever it might be, then they're going to find themselves not really wanting you on that team. You know, remember that team, the players that are consisting on that team are there for them too. It's not about you. The leadership on that team is not there to do your playing, you know, your game for you. They're there to assist and to work together as a team. And we'll go over more of that later because there are a lot of players that don't realize, okay, so I'm joining this team. They're going to help me. Well, help is one thing. Holding your hand is a whole other. So keep these things in mind, guys, that, you know, these can be huge repercussions. It could be reasons why you're not accepted on a team. It could be reasons why you're kicked from a team. It could be the reason you don't do well in the events. So really look at your stuff, see where you're laying at, and see if you need those corrections. If you need this correction, then this is something that you need to focus on. Don't go getting, for example, the base boost, because there's always going to be someone who can defeat your base. Don't worry about that. Worry about being able to defeat others' bases. Now, guys, again, this is just the five major reasons why you should prioritize breeding. There are, I'm sure, hundreds of reasons that we could come up with. So if you're a new player out there, go ahead and put in the comment section below what your level is and what tier dragon you're in, and let me see where you're at. And then if you're newer, not newer, so you've been around a while, go ahead and put any reasons you might think that you know lower level players should be prioritizing breeding that I didn't mention in today's video so that we can get them that information. Anyways, guys, I truly appreciate all of your support. Even those of you that are like 300s watching these little videos, I see your comments and I appreciate you. So anyways, thanks for the love and I love you all. Have a good time and I'll see you next time here on the RPW Gaming Channel.